thank you guys for tuning in and watching the Buffalo Fanatics. If you guys like what you see and you like the videos and the content that we provide, click every link in this description or go to the IG page, go to the Facebook page, but most importantly, keep tuning in on YouTube. If you guys like the merch, www.bffanshop.com. And if most importantly, you want to join the Fanatic team, the Bing team, www.jointhefanatics.com. I'll see you then. It's your boy and I'm gone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again, a.k.a. Mr. Scruff Daddy. Yeah, you see it. I'm not cleaned up, but guess what? We still going to bring that heat. We got another edition of Questions of the Week, and this week is just as good as last week with some fire questions. And I'm going to start it off with my man Jason Wally asking us, can Josh Allen have the same performance he did against the Dolphins and have it against the Broncos? Ha <laughs> ha! That is a million dollar question. Can he perform like he did against the Dolphins? Here's my take. No. Every performance is not going to be the same. Right? They were facing a bottom tier defense, a bottom tier offense, a bottom tier team in to begin with. So yes, I'm freaking proud and I'm happy. And yes, I'm very happy that Josh Allen had the performance he had. That was a boost in his confidence. That tells me that he's going to be ready to go with the Dolphins. Now, that tells me he's going to be ready to go against the Broncos. But we're facing a different beast in the Broncos. Chris Harris, DB, Von Miller. They've got some they've got some dogs on that defense. So I'm not expecting the same performance by any stretch. They've got DBs that can cover and they got they got a good run front. So we are going to have to bring our A game. We can't be giving the ball away. We have to be mistake free. So can he have the same performance? No, absolutely not. I'm expecting him to have a solid performance, but he's not going to give up. He's not going to put up four touchdowns like he did last week. It's just not going to happen. Defense like this will not allow Josh Allen to do that. Guess what they're going to do, though? They might not have the trust that we have in Josh Allen. So they will force him to pass the ball and beat them on defense. And guess what? It's going to be the battle of the Allens. Which Allen will prevail? One is going up against the number four defense. The other one's going up against number three defense. Which Allen will prevail? That's the real question. Jason Wally, I appreciate that question. That's a banger. All right. Colin Kachow. I really hope I'm pronouncing your name right, man. Colin Kachow. Kachow. Colin C. Let's go that way. Colin C. asks, Buffalo's offense versus Denver's defense or Denver's offense versus Buffalo's defense? Which do you prefer? That's a great question because that was what that's what it's going to come down to. Which defense is going to step up the most? I'll take the Bills defense versus a young Allen. <laughs> it's weird to say it, right? Uh, I'll take the Bills defense with an inexperienced Allen getting his first year start. You know what I'm saying? Not having that much experience in the league against a defense that's been doing it for some time. We have to do what Bill Belichick and his defense does to young quarterbacks, and that is confuse, send the blitz, send a whole bunch of things that Allen hasn't seen before. That is how I believe that we will prevail. It's going to be a defensive matchup. It's about who makes more mistakes, and I feel that the damn Broncos and their version of Allen is going to be the ones that make the mistakes, and they're going to pay for it with a Bills W. Colin, great question. So Colin doubles up with a great question once again. Do you think our new training facility makes that much of a difference? 1,000%. You ever go to a gym where all it has is just a weight, no treadmill, you know what I'm saying, no aerobics room, no nothing, just straight weights, right? Then you go to another facility that's got the swimming pool. It's got a gym in the basement. You want to play basketball. You want to play volleyball. You want to do whatever. It's got an aerobics room. It gives you more. That is what a new training facility can do to an athlete. It gives you more. Right. You can work on your cardio. You can work on your aerobics. You can work on your stretch. You can do all those things that an older uh, facility may not have. So having a state of the art facility that the Bills have 1000 percent, you even hear it from the players. They that is what makes some of these free agents come to Buffalo because of the training ability and the training facility. So, yes, that makes a very good, a very big difference. Colin, great double back question. I like that, man. My man, Scott Blakely. I appreciate you. Salute to you. I'm waiting for you to roll a, a perfect 300 when you're listening to me on the YouTube. Check this out. Tired of the critics on Josh Allen running. It's a part of his elite talent. And why would we not want to utilize it? 
It's like Lamar runs and everyone's amazed. Josh runs and it's because of our offense is lacking what it needs. I completely get it. That is part of his MO. That's part of his game. You can't take away part of Allen's game. And I have been one of that struggles that say, man, just stay in the pocket and do what you do. And when you need to run, you need to run. And I still believe that. Now, here's the difference between a Josh Allen and a Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is just an athlete that he can do it all. He can do it all. It's just natural to him. It comes natural, right? They have designed runs. It's natural to him. It's perfect. Josh Allen, I feel like he's more of an instinctive runner, right? If things don't go well his way, now he can run. That's what I prefer, right? If I know that Josh Allen is running, I have a better chance of stopping him. If I know that uh, Lamar Jackson is running, I don't know if I'm going to stop him because he's just that much of a better athlete. Now, nonetheless, that's part of Allen's game. So if Allen wants to run, let the man run. Just tuck the damn ball away. But I like him running when things break down and he has to scramble. That's when I like the most. But when it's a it's a, it's a scheduled run or a run that's predetermined from the offense, uh, I'm a little iffy. But Scott Blakely, nonetheless, that's a great question because a lot of people wow and amazed with Lamar Jackson and whatever he does. But when it comes to Josh Allen, oh, don't run the ball, don't do this. That's part of their both. That's part of both their games. They are they are a dual threat. They can throw the ball and they can run the ball. Shout out to you, Scott Blakely. Great question. Max Kimani says, is John Brown a Pro Bowl receiver? He's having a Pro Bowl year. So, yes, that makes him a Pro Bowl receiver. He is slated, if he continues to do what he does right now, and we finish the season, he's slated to be at over 1,300 yards. The last time we had a 1,300-yard receiver, Eric Moulds. So, yes, is he having a Pro Bowl season? He absolutely is. If he doesn't make it, it's a travesty. Andrew Penner comes up with a banger. Hear me out on this one. Andrew Penner asks, if Jordan Phillips keeps doing what he's doing and he's only done it for one year out of his career, what would your contract be? And what would it be for him to, what would you give him for him to stay in Buffalo? What kind of contract would you give him? That's a great question. Right now, he's playing well. And these players don't want a contract that's just like, you know, mediocre. He feels that he's playing just as good, if not better, than Aaron Donald. And Aaron Donald uh, is the best DT in the game. Now, Jordan Phillips is not an Aaron Donald, right? And we've seen players before where they have a big season and then they poo-poo the bed the next year. So we have to be very careful on what we give to Jordan Phillips. But I feel Jordan Phillips loves Buffalo. I feel that he'd be an asset to Buffalo. If I'm giving him a contract, I'm giving him something in between 5 mil and 6, 6.5 mil. I'm more comfortable with the 5, 5.5 mil a year uh, for Jordan Phillips to be in the middle. That means we got to make a decision when it comes to Starla Tulele. But they might want to they might want to restructure that thing because right now one player is is ascending, the other one is in the cold cellar. So if I'm gonna give a deal like that, I'm looking at a I'm like minimum four and a half, maximum six and a half deal uh, for my guy Jordan Phillips. I think we should retain his services and bring him back for multiple years to come. New Mexico EJE asks a really good question. He says, "Is it just me?" Or does anyone else think that Tremaine Edmonds appeared to be more of a finesse middle linebacker than an instinctual, physical middle linebacker? Sometimes I feel that it hurts his game a bit. Here's the deal. I like Tremaine Edmonds. I think we all like Tremaine Edmonds. Does he have the ability, freak ability, to play the middle linebacker, middle linebacker position? 1,000%. Would he be better slated as an outside linebacker and we bring in a thumper of a middle linebacker? Would that make our defense better? With a middle linebacker thumper, Edmonds on one side, Milano on the other. I kind of like that idea, but I don't want to give up on the 20-year-old, 21, the 20 or 21-year-old this soon. He's still getting his game together. He's still making plays, but we just want him to be a lot better, which he will get better. The question is, does he remain at middle linebacker or do we move him to the outside? That's the, that's the thing. So right now, I like him in the middle. I think he'll get his game together. Once, he, once the game starts really slowing down, he could be maybe our Keekly. You never know. He's got the coach for it. So he might be able to make that thing happen for us. So that's a really good question, man. Either he stays in the middle or goes to the outside. That depends on how we see the season going forward and how he produces. Great question. So Cardero Lindor, my guy. Cardero Lindor asked a really good question. Here it is. How come we're not running with a double tight end system? We got the tight ends on this team, but why aren't we utilizing them more? Here's the deal. That's a great question, right? 
it's it's a matter of matchups, who we're going up against, what kind of front we're going up against. Do we need more protection for a quarterback? Are we going to be setting up the run more? It, it's all about that. If the DBs are weak, if the DBs are weak, what are we doing? Are we going to attack the DBs? Or are we going to try to run the ball on a stout defense? So I find that you can bring that double tight end set certain points in the game, but it's got to be part of the game plan. If you're trying to run the ball down the team's throat, do a double tight end. Get them sucked in. We got the athletes at tight end in Croft and Dawson Knox. So why not utilize that? I get it. But we got Beasley, John Brown. We got some speed on the outside. You know what I mean? Isaiah McKenzie. We want to exploit and stretch the field. But when we need to get gritty, we can bring that double tight end set. And I'm okay with that. But right now, I think it's more of a game-to-game uh, scheme. Uh, that we have to decide whether we're going to use that or not. But I, I think we're going to start using it because later in the year, it's going to get cold. We're going to have to run the ball. So look for that double tight end set to come soon. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for questions of the week. Bangers as usual. Keep the questions coming. If you want to vent, vent. If you have something to say, say it. If you have more questions, speak it. It's your boy. And I'm gone.